let's talk about the three dimensional variograph. Actually, in case of geological modeling, we're mostly using geostatistics for the three dimensional case because we usually use different geostatistical functions to calculate, for example, porosity cubes or the facies cube. 3D variogram is simply a stack of 2D variogram plus 1D variogram. And usually 2D variogram is along directions x and y, while 1D variogram is along direction of x. It's really logical because uh, if you find out the size of our cell, it's usually 50 by 50 meters on x and y directions, and it's only one meter in z direction, in the vertical direction. And for sure, uh, it's changed its variability along the x and y directions are much, much smaller than along the vertical direction. What we're going to do? We need to calculate the variogram function on the three directions. First is the vertical direction. We're going to find the uh, lag distance and the number of lags to calculate the good experimental variogram. And then we have to interp uh, approximate it with a good theoretical variogram. After that, we have to calculate the uh, two-dimensional variogram on two directions, major and minor. And we once again have to find the good experimental variogram and we have to approximate it with a good theoretical variogram. Then we're going to obtain these parameters. Nugget effect, type of the variogram, anisotropy range in major, minor and vertical directions. That means we need to find the five different things. And let's see how it's going to occur for our three-dimensional case. Imagine that we got nugget equals to nearly zero, type of the variogram is spherical, and an isotropy range is one and a half thousands in both minor and major directions and it's equal to 2 in the vertical direction. What's going to happen if we change our anisotropy range to 500 to 500? The map or the cube going to look as it's shown in the figure. And we can see that outside of the range it gives us the average value, while inside of the range it gives us uh, the changing of the porosity values from the value in the well to the average. And just as we did that in the two-dimensional case, we can apply some anisotropy. For example, in this case, from south to north, our anisotropy is three times more than in perpendicular direction. And you can see that our anomalies, our porosity anomalies, are elongated from south to north. And just as we did it for the wells, we can apply a different direction of these anomalies. 